Are you ready to uncover your retirement solution? Learn more as Jeremy Kyle and his guests guide you along the path of retirement and reveal the five steps you need to take to solve your retirement puzzle. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Retirement Revealed with Jeremy Kyle. Today we're going to be talking about what to do when the market drops. Jeremy, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Eric. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, you know, I know it's That's a good. Little, little scary out there for a lot of different reasons, but uh, today it sounds like we're going to be focusing on the market and what's kind of going on right now. Well, that's exactly it. We were uh, talking just as part of our five-step process, uh, how do you set up your investments? And of course, we were talking about that when the market's at a high point. Here we are. You take a look uh, after February 12th, the market started uh, dropping. Uh, we happen to be talking right now today, uh, March 19th, the market itself is down about 35%. So probably worthwhile to revisit these types of things. It's mm -hmm. it's easy to say, sure, I'll rebalance, I'll diversify when the market's going up. It's hard to do when you're actually in the thick of it. So we need to uh, just remind everyone, uh, what do you do when the market drops? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so where do we start with this today? Well, three main words, and those three words are risk, diversify, and rebalance. And it's in that order. And we, we talked about this before, but the idea of risk, how much risk are you willing to put up with in the market? That's certainly going to be tested uh, right now. And what's unfortunate about this is when the market's going up, it's really easy to think, I need more stock market money. I need to make more. Warren Buffett calls the uh, the greed that's out there. Mm -hmm. And then later on, when the market starts dropping, all of a sudden the fear uh, kicks in and all these thoughts start going through your head of, I can't afford to lose a dollar. I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. But one thing that could be interesting about all this is if the market's down, maybe write down some of your thoughts. What are you feeling right now when the market's down? Uh, what are you doing at this point in time? This will help you out later on when the market comes back up. It'll come back up. We just don't know when or how long it'll take to get mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So maybe right now is a good time just to assess how much risk are you willing to put up with uh, in the stock market. And one of the ways that we like to, to do that, ask a few different questions. One of them is just a, a simple numbers. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much risk are you willing to put up with in the market? And number 10 being the, the riskiest. But another way to look at it, because there's some parts of our brain that don't deal with numbers, is just thinking through uh, with words, uh, would you want to have average risk, above average, or below average risk? All right. If you kind of ask yourself those two questions, you should be able to confirm how you feel about risk in the market. One other thing that's important is figuring out when do you need this money in the market? We've had the opportunity to talk with a few folks. Most of our clients are very well uh, prepared and understanding how the market works, but there's still some uh, folks that need some reassurance. And some of them are saying, man, this market's going down. What do we do? I say, well, when do you need the money? Uh, well, I'm not retiring for five years. Yeah. What do you think the market's going to do in the next five years? It's going to be a while perhaps before you need that money. And if you set things up properly, it might be seven years, 10 years before you need a dollar that you have in the stock market, right? So yeah. what are you doing today? about this money you need 10 years from now, why, why do you have this uh, feeling uh, about uh, I need to um, pull out of the stock market, right? It's it's well worth it to understand well ahead of time. What level of risk are you want to put up with? Uh, but even now with the market being down, really sit down and assess when do you truly need the money that's in the stock market? It's probably a lot longer from now than you think. Yeah, I think that most people the bottom line is, okay, like you said at the beginning, the stock market's down 35%. If my retirement accounts are down 35%, I've lost 35% of my money, I'm going to run out, right? I mean, there, there's that panic, there's mm -hmm. that fear, but again, there, there's time. Time is on most people's side. Yep. You uh, get so it. So I, I think that that's, that's the important thing to remember. And and again, I think it, I heard it from you first, that if you're trying to time the market, it's it's just never a good idea. And it's it's like, you have to be right twice, right? Exactly. You got it. Yeah, you'll get it more wrong uh, than you will get it right. And you're, you're, I, love, I love what you said there. You got to do it twice. You have to time the market by saying, when do you get out? And what most people don't even think through next is when do you get back into the market? Mm -hmm. It doesn't do you much good if you get the uh, get out of the market and then it goes up 30% and then you go back in, right? You just shot yourself in the foot. And that's why we just preach so much. Uh, make sure you have some short-term money, have some long-term money, uh, you can afford to have long-term money and let the market rebalance and come back up again uh, if you do have that short-term money. So it's so important uh, when you're diversifying, think of things in your time horizon of any money you need in the next few years, perhaps ought to be out of the market. Any money that you've got a few years down the road, 
uh, can be in the market, but even then, make sure you got the right level of risk. And we talked about the scale of one through 10. If your number happens to be a six, uh, just the easy way to think about it is maybe you ought to have about 60% in the stock market, which means then you got 40% out of the stock market mm -hmm. that's in the bond area or cash different things things that aren't uh, going down with the stock market uh, you'd be surprised actually um, how long until you need this money that's actually in the stock market you'd be surprised when you add it all up um, how almost little you have in the stock market somebody that's well diversified has some short-term money set aside in the bank or uh, certain areas that are interest rate they, they might have a lot less in the stock market than they really think so some of these reactions are certainly natural Right? Emotional reactions are very, very natural. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's why it's so important to work with an advisor, someone that can walk through the numbers with you, remind you of the, the long-term plan, and go through and say, well, that's, that's great. I'm glad you are expressing these thoughts about what should you do with your money that's in the market. But it turns out we looked at your plan, and you got 12 years before you even need to take anything out of the stock mm -hmm, market. Mm -hmm. Knowing that, what would you want to do? It's so funny because you brought up a memory from yesterday, Jeremy. I took my daughter to a car dealership. Uh, she is a tremendous saver. She saves very, very well, and she's been driving around a car that is, uh, yeah, it's it's a piece of a piece of something. Anyway, <laughs> but piece she, of work, it's, right? it's paid off. Needs a lot of work done. It needs a lot of work. Let, you know, let's just put it that way. Uh, so she's ready for a different car, and she's saved all her money. She could easily pay cash for a car if she wanted to, a used car. But so we've been looking at different types, and we went and drove one yesterday. Oh man, she was, this is amazing. I love this car, so on and so forth. Well, we're going to walk away, right? I had, I had to be the no man, meaning, look, mm -hmm. we, we have other cars to look at. This is one body style, one type, one make, one model. I know you drove it and it's fun, but let's walk away from this one. We have an appointment on Saturday to go see another one. Sometimes you just have to walk away and let the emotions die down a bit to make that better decision, to look at some mm -hmm. options, to see, you know, like you said, what's my time frame? And I, I told Isabel yesterday, my daughter, I said, darling, that money's not going anywhere. You have it. It's there. You can take a week or two to make a decision. Your car still runs fine. You know, it's just not mm -hmm. great. Uh, and, and, you know, you'll be able to take the time to choose what you want to do instead of feeling like you have to choose one thing right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly it. Even now when you uh, happen to turn on the news and you see the markets going up and down, well, one thing you could do, turn off the news. Yeah. Right? One thing that might be helpful, uh, there's interesting enough, there's been a lot of studies that have shown people that looked at their investments less often made more money, right? Because mm -hmm. they were uh, looking at things in a, in a broader time horizon. They were, they were having a better perspective of things might seem scary in a particular moment, uh, but guess what happens next? Another moment. Yeah. And if you have a few more of those moments in between uh, your feelings of, uh, of reacting to the, the way the market's going up and down, uh, and actually making the action, uh, you'll probably have a much better decision. If you just separate some time out between your uh, initial feelings about what the market's doing and when you go out and take some action. And that's exactly it. Having an advisor uh, will help you uh, talk through some of it. And sometimes when you talk through a worst case scenario, best case scenario, you, you just get a better uh, sense of what's the best option for you. Yeah, absolutely. So we talked about risk, talked about what you kind of do uh, in general. Uh, it's so important when you understand how much risk you're willing to take, that your advisor understands how much risk you're willing to take, and that you understand how much risk your advisor is actually taking. And we've talked about this story before, but we've run into a person years ago. This is before the 07, 08 uh, crash. And we met them. We walked through and figured out how much risk there should be taken in their portfolio. And they were taking more than double of what they should have been taking. And we mm. said, look, you're, uh, you're, you just have way too much risk. And of course, this was the spring of 08. They happen to have their statements from December of 2007. They said, hey, things are looking great. Yeah, that was three months ago. You just don't have your new statements yet. And things have started to change around. And perhaps you ought to get into the right level of risk on there. And they said, oh, well, my, uh, my advisor told me that I'm conservative. Well, you're 100% in stocks. It doesn't yeah. matter if these are conservative stocks that they told you about. Stocks are still stocks. Stocks can go down. There's no such thing as a safe stock. And when we did a little bit more research, turned out she wasn't even 100% invested in the stock market. She was like 120% invested in the stock market. The accounts and investments that person was using for her was borrowing money to go invest more in the stock market. Wow. It's just such a crazy situation of how much risk they had 
when they were hearing, oh, this is a conservative uh, situation. It, it doesn't hurt to get that second opinion, uh, to go to places like Morningstar. Morningstar is a great uh, resource, or maybe have an advisor do this for you because they're doing this all the time. Just get that second opinion. How much risk are you taking on your uh, investments? This person should have been like a five out of 10 for risk, and they're more like a 12 out of 10 for mm -hmm. risk. It was horrible. And then we were talking her through it and found out about a year later, uh, she'd stuck with that advisor, but found out she had lost about 80% of her money. And that just wow. was way too much. Uh, you can't afford to lose 80% of your money. Uh, and you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have that situation where you're taking on more than double the amount of risk. It just shows how important uh, it is. So I think we've, we've talked through that. It's just figuring out the right level of risk is so important. And don't just trust uh, the person you work with. Uh, do a little bit of research. Make sure that you know how much risk you're taking in that portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. So talk about risk. Uh, next thing is diversify. That one's a little simple. It's the idea of just having um, not too many eggs in one basket, just spread out to a bunch of different areas. The first step is have the right level of stocks, have the right level of bonds. The next step is to have different types of stocks and different types of bonds. Mm -hmm. Have some short-term money, have some long-term money, have some things like Roth IRAs that will pay out to you tax-free. Have some things like traditional IRAs that you got a tax break for when you put that money into your traditional 401k and things like that. It is A-OK -okay to have a lot of different uh, things out there. That's why we don't have to talk about too much. And I think a lot of people get that. Thankfully, uh, when we're talking to investors, they, they get that a lot. The idea of just spreading out, that's such an important thing. Um, that, and thankfully, a lot of people get that. But we just want to bring that one up again. Yep. Yep. Especially when one basket gets knocked over. All right. Kind of what's yes, going on you now. you got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, it's interesting. People have been calling us and saying, oh my goodness, everything's down. Uh, you know, we took a look here. You got a couple things that are up. That's the whole point of diversification yep. is maybe some of the investments you didn't like last year, you might have said, well, how come everything else is making 20% and this one made 3%? Well, it might be the reverse this year. That's the whole point of diversification. And you can never lose sight of that, even when the market's up and especially when the market's down. Some of those diversifiers, those things that uh, are plotting along sometimes and aren't the high flyers times like now when the market's down, uh, you, you're pretty thankful you have those. Yeah, absolutely. Last thing of that, uh, risk diversify rebalance is rebalancing. And we get a good number of questions on when do I rebalance? When's the right time to rebalance? Uh, interesting enough, uh, we've been reading a lot of studies on this It almost doesn't matter when you do it. It just matters that you do it, right? People are trying to say, well, when's the perfect time? You know, do I do it every month, every quarter, once a year? When do I actually do it? And the answer is it's, it doesn't matter. Just do it. Right? Yeah. Pick something that works for you. If we're going through and trying to find the best way to do it, uh, we have a personal opinion that you shouldn't do it based on a time. You know, if you look at January 2nd every year, you know what the market changes. And who knows if that's the, the perfect time every year to do a rebalancing, right? Uh, we look at more, it's a bigger term, but it's called tolerance bands. The idea is, well, the market goes up and down. You have a lot of different investments that are out there. And if you set this level of, I want to have a certain amount in this area, and then because of all the way the market moves and the way things interact with each other, it moves outside of that range, outside of that tolerance band, uh, that's when you look at rebalancing, right? Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily wait till a specific day. And, you know, if nothing changes for six months, why would you bother rebalancing? But if everything changes within two weeks or two months, maybe it's a time to rebalance. So we, we personally prefer this idea of, of kind of relative, what's going on relative to each other, uh, called tolerance bands. Just keep an idea on, you want a certain amount, and when things move outside of that that range, well, you don't have what you sign up for. Now's a good time to rebalance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, these are general ideas, right? Risk, diversify, rebalance, actually important uh, ideas. You wanna be looking at this all the time, but we're just gonna take the last few moments here to talk about what do you do now if the market's down? Uh, what do you do when you didn't plan ahead of it, right? What, what, what if you really do need the money? What can you do, right? You, you talked about uh, your, your daughter there uh, buying a new car. Yeah, one thing you could do is delay a purchase for a little bit, mm -hmm. right? You don't necessarily need to have a new car right now or a different car uh, right now. What's interesting too is a lot of times um, people aren't understanding or realizing your investments actually kick out uh, interest, dividends, gains uh, each year. And most of the time, the best idea is to reinvest. You know, mm -hmm. let that one, two, three percent reinvest back in, buy stuff, buy more things in the in the investments. But if you really didn't need the money, you could take those dividends, take those gains out of your investments, and not even sell one share of stock. 
So that's maybe a good place uh, mm -hmm. to look. Or maybe you can look around in your bank accounts and just try to find out, do I have the right amount of interest am I getting paid? We just met someone this week. They had a lot of money in their bank account. I mean, they had a hundred, 200,000 in their checking account. That was way too much uh, just you know for them. And they're earning 0.02% interest. Yeah. I got a feeling we can go out and find better interest than 0 0.02. So maybe instead of selling money uh, out of the stock market because you need it right away, uh, they could maybe look at their investments and start getting some interest and dividends paid out to them. They could look at their checking account and turn that into a higher interest uh, situation. There's ways that you can go about to get better interest, uh, better gains, uh, maybe try to save some, not spend as much uh, when the market's down before you go out there and go sell something that's uh, that's at a discounted rate. Right? If the market's down 30, 35%, you want to buy something on sale for 30, 35%. Yeah. You don't want to sell back to somebody else when it's at a rate that's so much lower. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So a couple of other things we hear sometimes is why well, I, I need this money. I need this money that's in the, the stock market. And our question is, well, you might need the income. You might need money, but you need that particular income, right? Is that one specific stock the only place you can get that money from? Um, it's well worth it to look through what else can you be doing mm -hmm. uh, to, to get that money. There's nothing wrong with needing money, uh, but please look through and see well, where, where else can I get money. Um, interesting enough with this whole coronavirus, we happen to be talking here in mid-March and you have the coronavirus thing uh, going on. We'll see when this comes out, uh, what, the, what the result of uh, the coronavirus uh, situation is. But right now, uh, there's a lot of places like Costco, uh, Amazon, your grocery store, they're hiring Right? If you really didn't yeah. need money, uh, do you need to sell the stock on sale? Or maybe you can go and get a second job, right? Uh, maybe you can go out and find a way to get some extra income. My wife's doing a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Have you heard of that, Eric? Oh, Facebook yeah, Marketplace? absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And what's great about that right now, uh, you can put it up on the internet. Don't have to uh, meet anyone in person. They, You can put it on your front porch. They'll leave the money for you, right? You can. It's like a virtual rummage sale. You know, Maybe yeah. that's a place you can go out and uh, you know, make some money on there. Yeah. Or what's interesting, and I'm thinking through this this couple I talked about a little bit earlier, they're certainly not getting enough interest on the stock, I'm sorry, an interest on their uh, their bank accounts, uh, but they also just signed up for Social Security. Same. Social Security grows at roughly 8% a year. They did not need to sign up for Social Security because they had so much money in their checking account. Yeah, exactly. And we're trying to think through what's the best way for you to make some money here? Well, maybe 0 0.02 is not a good enough interest rate in the checking account. But also maybe you should use some of that money and you can go back and delay. You can go back and suspend some of your benefits from Social Security. Let that grow by 8%. It's mm -hmm. just interesting. When you start looking through ways to make money or save money, there's a lot of places uh, that are out there. So we really want people to rethink before you pull the trigger and hit sell. Really rethink your ideas of I need to do this. I have to do that. I need that money. Uh, I, need, I can't afford to lose it. Uh, there's a lot of ideas that you have which certainly are, are fine to have as feelings, uh, but please through, sit sit down, kind of pause and, and just reflect on what is it you truly need. And again, that's what having that advisor there can really help you out. Yeah, I, I think all of us at different times in our life, especially when there's emotion involved, we get tunnel vision, right? So having that person next to you to say, okay, let, let's stop looking in that direction <laughs> because that's that's the only thing you're focusing on. Hey, mm -hmm. look over here, check this out. This This may be a better option. Uh, I, th I think that's fantastic, and I agree 100%. Find that professional that, that will help you to wake up from that tunnel vision or, or, or avert your eyes so you can see other options out there. Jeremy, thank you so much for this. Do you have any closing thoughts for today? Yeah, I just want to sum it all up. Of When we're looking at investing, we believe strongly that your planning is far more important than your investing. Uh, focus on the things that you can control and uh, protect against the things that you cannot control. You can control your spending. You can control your interest rate sometimes in the bank accounts. You can make some decisions on your investments that you can control that have nothing to do uh, with selling at a loss or trying to control the stock market. You cannot control the stock market. So, so think through those things. Uh, rethink your thoughts of I need to do this. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. And especially uh, when the market comes back up, um, and right now maybe isn't the best time to make radical changes to your investments, but please think through how do I feel right now about the way the market's going and just understand how much risk you're taking uh, in your investments. Understand how much risk you're willing to take 
make sure your advisor knows that. Make sure your advisor is actually following through with that. And just the last few things about the stock market. The market can only go up. The only reason the stock market goes up is because it has the possibility to go down. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone that's trying to uh, get extra funds, get extra money by letting the stock market grow, just this is a natural part of it. The market goes down. It can only go up because it has the ability to go down. And just no matter what anyone tells you, there's no such thing as a safe stock. That just doesn't exist. Yep, absolutely. All right, Jeremy, thank you again for your time today. Thank you, Eric. We'll be talking soon. Absolutely. And for you listening, thank you for listening to the Retirement Revealed podcast with Jeremy Kyle. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Jeremy comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device, which makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. And again, think about those friends and family that maybe you've had discussions about, wow, look at what the market's doing. Man, this coronavirus thing. Oh, what are we going to do? I, I can't can't tell you how many times I've heard <laughs> friends, family, what is going on in the world today? Well, you know what? Share this podcast with them. Let them understand that they need to get their vision to focus on something else besides just that one issue. Whatever that one issue is for them, if they have tunnel vision, you can be that person to help pull them out of that and uh, see a different way. Again, thanks so much for listening today. For everyone at Kyle Financial Partners, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day and stay safe out there. Thank you for listening to the Retirement Revealed podcast. Click on the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. Visit retirement-revealed.com to learn more. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Kyle Financial Partners. Kyle Financial Partners does not provide legal, accounting, or tax advice. Consult your attorney or tax professional. Representatives have general knowledge of the Social Security tenants. For complete details on your situation, contact the Social Security Administration. Kyle Financial Partners is a part of the Thrivent Advisor Network, a registered investment advisor. Content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.